Hello and welcome back, Commander. We're doing something rather interesting this time around. If it's not immediately obvious, we're playing Command & Conquer Renegade. Now, I have to mention a few things. Uh, first off, off, that the uh, base game, I had re recorded everything in it, and unfortunately, there was a quite hefty uh, stuttering issue. And it turns out, I think I had to install a, a third-party patch, as well as enable VSync. So, um, probably all for the best, because second time around, I do a bit better at this game. Welcome back to Basic Havoc. My name's Logan Shepard. I'll be your guide for this refresher course. This training will take you through tactical movement, weapon reusage, vehicle piloting, and base operations. You can move forward, back, strafe left, and strafe right with the movement keys. All of your controls can be customized to suit your taste via the options menu. Practice moving around, then meet me in the next section. Here you'll learn about jumping and climbing. Pressing the jump key makes you jump. To climb a ladder, approach the ladder and press the action key. Now it's time for a test. Climb this ladder and jump to the So we have your train. standard FPS control tutorial level. Pretty easy to figure out and go through the motions. Looks like you've got it. Now, let's cover your EVA unit. That device on your left arm is called EVA, short for Electronic Video Assistant. The most important thing EVA does is track mission objectives. I'll activate your first mission objective. Notice EVA announced the objective and indicated the location on your radar in the lower left-hand corner with a green star. Mission objectives come in three different varieties primary, secondary, and hidden objectives. The green star indicates a primary mission objective. Objectives of this type must be completed for mission success. The data link includes a map, mission data, and a dynamically updated combat database. You can access any data link screen by pressing the EVA key, which activates the most recently viewed EVA page. That covers it for EVA. Just remember to refer back to your data links whenever you need tactical information. During missions, the action key can be used to interact with people and equipment. You can talk to a soldier by using the action key. Ask the soldier at the exit to open the gate, and we'll move on. This is also not a game I've ever really played myself. All clear. Uh, the first We're time just... I ever played this game was this year, under... so I'm a little bit behind the We're times. It also means that I won't know, and I'm not going to bother going through all of the uh, backstory for everything in this game. Level one security now, clearance. I'll show you how to use security cards. Notice the color of this door. You'll need a green security card to open it. Yellow doors will require yellow cards, and red doors require red cards. Here's a green security card. This is the Advanced Guard Tower. It provides automated base defenses. Now, head inside and down the elevator. Sydney is waiting for you there. This door requires level one security clearance. Hey, Havoc. Here you will learn more about your electronic video assistant, Eva for short. On the bottom of your display are two meters, one for health and one for armor. As you take damage, these meters decrease. Armor reduces the amount of damage you take. Here's an example. Watch what happens when I shoot you. Hey! Uh. Is that necessary? Notice your health has decreased. As it gets lower, the meter turns yellow, then red to indicate you are near death. Now it's time for power-ups. This is a health power-up. Pick it up and I'll continue. As long as you're not gonna shoot me again. Your health meter is full again. Now let's try an armor power-up. Pick this one up and I'll continue. Now your armor meter is full, meaning your armor is completely intact. Now watch your health and armor meters again. You want to cut that out? That's the last time. <laughs> Honest. Notice how your armor was damaged, but you lost less health. Okay, you should be clear on power-ups, so let's move on to your radar. In addition to mission objectives, your radar shows the position of infantry, vehicles, and buildings. Radar shows your immediate surroundings. So, unfortunately, the radar is specifically right. talking about the bottom left. Strategic view. Press the map key Not to take a look the map, at the overhead map. Which is infantry appear as circles. What I thought Note they the would be pointing at. Especially since she says that and you can't see anybody on there. Position on the radar. GDI units appear in yellow. 
nod units in red. Neutral units appear in white. Watch the red triangle representing the nod vehicle as it passes on the radar. And again, nothing on your map, which sucks. Also, the map is very useless in this game. Uh, I wouldn't rely on it ever. Notice the yellow square indicating the position of this GDI building. Actually, it's showing the position of the master control terminal, but we'll cover it later. Don't want to confuse the grunt, huh? Building operations are part of another tutorial. Speaking of other tutorials, let's get moving. I'll have Eva highlight your next mission objective. Back to the tour bus. I'll catch you later. So this is one of the few games that actually has a button dedicated to 180 degree turns. She likes me. This is the infantry it's actually pretty interesting Inside, that they would include it, because I don't really think it's necessary. I have a gunner. Long time, pal. What you got for me? This is the infantry barracks where we process recruits. Nod has an equivalent building called Hand of Nod. We'll be using this infantry barracks in the firing range out back for weaponry training. This first weapon is the Vervac Commando Elite Falcon Automatic Pistol. Select it by pressing the handguns key and head out back so to the So presumably range. you shouldn't have been using your pistol at all so far. There are still some targets to be destroyed. Com Notice your targeting reticle has an outer circle and an inner dot. The outer circle shows where you're pointing the weapon. The inner dot shows where the weapon will actually hit. You may have an obstacle in the way which prevents you from targeting properly. Port the outer Next is the Vervac R59 Pierce Sniper Rifle. Select the sniper rifle by pressing the sniper weapons key. This this weapon serves two functions, accurate long-range targeting and sound detection. Use secondary fire to activate the scope. You can zoom in and out using the zoom control keys. The weapon is equipped with a directional microphone, which can pick up conversations at long ranges. Use secondary fire again to deactivate the scope. Only your automatic pistol has infinite ammunition. You need to watch ammunition for other weapons, like this sniper rifle. The remaining ammunition in your clip and the total count of remaining ammunition is shown at the bottom of your display. Another indicator of ammo loss is your targeting reticle. If it turns yellow, you are either in need of reloading or out of ammunition. Red means fire, yellow means I need ammo, gotcha. To reload a weapon, press the reload key. If you need more ammunition, a power-up is ready near the firing range. Eliminate all targets and come back for the automatic rifle. So there's a little bit of location damage in this game. Um, the game actually tracks a lot of where you shoot and what you do. The next weapon is the Corbretti AR-70 Raptor Automatic Rifle. Use the automatic weapons key to select this weapon. This is good stuff, Gunner, but when do we get to the real explosives? Eliminate the targets and then come back for more exotic weaponry. It'll track waist shots, leg shots, arm shots, head shots, body shots, and so on. Next up is the Sackles A 66mm Type R12 Locust Automatic Rocket Launcher. Select this weapon by pressing the Rocket Launcher key. Now you're talking. Take your time destroying all the targets. Come back in when you're done. Explosives, as you might imagine, also have splash damage, so you want to be careful where exactly you shoot. Though it's not always clear just how much distance is required for splash. Let's move on to your line of work. Press the mines key for remote C4 explosive. Use primary fire to place the C4 charge on a target. Then, move to a safe distance before detonating with your secondary fire. This is a lot to swallow and There are still some targets to be destroyed. Come back also, you can you unfortunately go. skip uh, dialogue if you move or cross trigger lines. You can also survive C4 from a pretty close distance. Provided you have the armor for it anyways. Now obviously there's no reason to sneak. These guys don't shoot back. They don't react. So you can do some goofy stuff sometimes.
This last item is the GS-2 Godsend Satellite Targeting Device, otherwise known as the Ion Cannon Beacon. This is used to guide orbiting Ion Cannon satellites to their targets. Nod has a similar device known as a nuclear strike. There are still some targets to be destroyed. Come back when so you're not even just leaving the building, it might be a distance thing. So apologies if I cut some dialogue, it'll happen later in the game, willingly or not. Unfortunately. Ten, nine, eight, uh, this countdown was added by a patch. Six, Normally five, it doesn't ever four, do that. He can also be rather close to an ion cannon blast and be fine. That's not all the weaponry you'll encounter, but these instructions should get you started. Now, I believe you're to go to the weapons factory. I'll indicate your next location on your radar. Stay safe out there, mate. Thanks for the class, Gunner. I'll see you on the field. I should also point out that some of these buildings have uh, what's called blocked entrances or fake entrances. They don't normally show up in uh, if you're playing the game normally. It's just there for uh, this tutorial. A pleasure to work with you again, Havoc. This is the Weapons Factory. The Weapons Factory controls vehicle production at... You didn't finish the course. You need to reach all four so checkpoints before I can I don't I can know if it's you. a distance thing sometimes or something else. Well, face the first else. person in the vehicle is the driver. Next is the gunner. Others are passengers if the vehicle carries other personnel. If you are the only person in the vehicle, you are simultaneously driving and gunning. Aim the machine gun with the targeting reticle and drive with the movement keys. Press forward to accelerate and backward to brake or reverse. Take the Humvee around the entire track to complete the next objective. Follow the blue stars on next vehicle is the medium oh, tank. Someone blew up this my is Humvee. a treaded vehicle, meaning it turns tighter and has more on. You can squish infantry units with some vehicles. Here are some targets for you to practice squishing. Now, I should also point out that uh, I'm not a very big fan of vehicle controls in this game. Um, I'm going to have a lot more time to uh, talk and slash complain about it. But, uh, yeah, it could could have been improved. Also, sadly, you can't do the golden eye thing of killing somebody twice. Also, for whatever reason, the weapons factory is not immune to damage. It's there's something weird about how the game treats like invulnerability. Sometimes it thinks about it, and other times it doesn't. Also, talking to Hotwire or hitting E. Uh, allows you to get the data link update for her. So basically just see what she's all about. I'm not going to show off data link stuff just because it's all very basic. There's not much of a point to show it off really. It's just typically it's about one or two lines that uh, describe an item. So in Hotwire's case it might just say how uh, she's a vehicle specialist and you know got her name for uh, you know criminal activities at a young age. Not that that's the case, uh, but, you know, it's certainly in the realm of possibilities. Also, I seem to have broken the tutorial by shooting at the War Factory. I'm not quite sure how this happened. The last time I did any shenanigans in the tutorial, it didn't seem to break it, but I know where to go next, so I might as well try. Welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Ignatio Mobius. This is the Tiberium Refinery, a processing center Damn, for Tiberium missed. harvests. 
All base operations and production rely upon the harvesting of Tiberium. Simply put, Tiberium is the primary source of income for your base. The same is true for Nod. Tiberium itself is still a mystery I have yet to solve, but we do know it collects valuable minerals from the surrounding area. Suffice to say, Tiberium is valuable. The important thing to know is it is also harmful to human tissue. Stay away from it or expect damage. Go outside and meet with the officer. He will continue your tour of the facilities. You ready? Our next stop is the power plant. Follow By me. By the way, uh, Logan might seem like a major character since he's walking around the tutorial with you but as far as i can tell uh, everything that Ten. relates to Nine. logan was cut Seven. Six. this is Five. the power plant Four. head inside for the briefing meet me here when you're done One. Zero. my name is elena petrova this is not my normal field of work so i'm going to make this quick this is the power plant it supplies power to other buildings Destroying a power plant will shut down other structures. Watch what happens when the power plant is disabled. Some of the affected buildings will have slower operation and production. Others shut off entirely. Keep in mind, not every building requires power to function. We are finished. Meet up with your guide outside. Elevators are also weird in this game, but we'll get to that later. That's it. My job's done, sir. Captain Parker, I'm Lieutenant Moss. To show the effects of building destruction, let's start a simulated Nod assault. Yeah, simulated. The refinery is being attacked. Let's continue. Destroying a building from the exterior is difficult, especially when the building is under repair. Notice the GDI engineer working on the master control terminal inside. Master what? Master control terminal. The heart of a building. This is what happens when a building is destroyed. Once the building is destroyed, it can no longer be repaired. You can complete the tutorial by eliminating the Nod officers, who are coordinating reinforcements. You'll recognize them when you see them. But your reticle information will tell you for sure. If and the game likes to do this unceremoniously. 